Propertyology regards right now as a very exciting time for investing in Australian real estate. There are some fantastic opportunities that Propertyology can help you take advantage of before buyers re-emerge from their coronavirus cocoons. Propertyology has a national focus. Now more than ever, experience and knowledge are the most valuable currency. Propertyology has that in spades. To find out how Propertyology's multi-award winning buyers agents can help you prosper, contact them now at propertyology.com.au. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. Hey, good everyone. How are you going? Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. I know like most Australians, we've all been instructed, or at least in New South Wales, by the government to uh, get out there and uh, go and spend some money, hopefully in the regional areas. Road trips are all okay now, so uh, get out, get out there and uh, try and inject some money back into the economy. For the first time in nearly 30 years, uh, Australia is moving into a recession. And what does that mean? Well, we'll have these discussions on the Smart Property Investment Show in relation to property moving forward. But we're recording this at a point in time when Commonwealth is still musing around stimulus packages for potentially new homeowners and also renovators who are, I think the number's sort of sitting around 25000 bucks now as an incentive or a grant to buy or build a new home. And uh, we're not yet knowing what's happening with renovations. But the government, federal government, and no doubt the state governments want to get tradies uh, busy at work, delivering value and keeping the economy moving. So there's many different parts of the economy and all these little sort of uh, smaller sectors all contribute to how we as a nation can proceed and progress after COVID-19 and property very much is a big part of that equation. It's the backbone of the nation as where a lot of the value of the banks lie in terms of their shareholder value when it comes to paying dividends, uh, how effectively they are lending money. And it's an emotive thing as well for most Australians. Unfortunately, these days, property, and my view of it, property is accessible to most Australians if you're willing to make commitments and have good financial sense and, and financial diligence. But unfortunately, affordability is a challenge. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of younger people are now struggling to get into property. And I guess the rite of passage of ever having a picket fence and a quarter acre block is it's, you know, it's a nostalgia from a number of decades ago. But property is accessible. There's a number of different ways that you can do it outside of the more traditional stuff. And today, that's pretty much going to be our conversation. I've asked to come into the studio, Darren Younger. He's the CEO of a company called Bricklet, which does fractional property investing. Have I got that right, Darren? Is that what you do? (laughs) Well, pretty close. I mean, we call it fragmented property. So, the way that the platform works is, I guess, a differentiation between fragmented property and fractional property is that fragmented property means that all the owners of all the different pieces are actually on title. So, they're on the land title as opposed to a, a fractional ownership model where that's typically a some kind of unit trust or company structure, something that sits around the property, owns the property, and then all the fractional owners effectively own units in that trust or shares in that company. So, I'm happy you pulled me up on that because it's exactly how I wanted you to explain it for me. And I think most of our listeners, Darren, have probably heard about, and I'll put it in inverted commas, alternative ways to invest in residential property that is not you sort of traditional one person on the title and whether it's investment property or unoccupied. So, so this has been something that's been working in the background for a number of different years now about smart people like yourself coming up with ways to make property accessible to the people who may not necessarily be able to afford a full property, but get the benefits of investing in residential real estate. And that's pretty much the challenge that people have had. And and this very much, it sounds as though Bricklet is a solution. Can you give us a bit of an understanding of of how this idea came about and how you got going doing what you're doing? It's got to be a good origin story. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess, you know, having a bit of a history, you know, a small history in kind of property development and and doing certain things. And then, you know, just by knowing a number of people in the office and friends and, and people that are trying to get into the property market, you know, finding it really hard. And I guess, you know, by working in early stage technology, you know, that's the passion is around that and innovation. And, and it was trying to come up with an answer to exactly that problem around, you know, making property accessible to more people. You know, so we started to investigate that and thought, well, you know, fractional models have been around for a long time, but haven't really taken off. So we did a lot of research around that and understood that people really want to have when they own property, they like to be on title. I mean, that's effectively the ownership of property, right? When you actually own it. So we looked at how do we create a way, or even if it was possible to create a way for people to have independent part ownership of a property. So probably the easiest way to understand it is anybody can actually go and, you know, 
take five mates and go and buy a property and that can be done. But the challenge is always later on when one person wants to sell. So, you know, what are the rules around that? You know, like, does everyone have to sell? Do they have to convince the other four people to sell? And so the challenges around, I guess, sharing into property has been always the challenge for what happens later on. So what the platform actually does is it effectively creates this independent part ownership. So it means that me and you and a few others can own a property, but we actually own our own piece individually and it's on title. So I can sell it at any point and I don't have to worry about what the other guys are doing. That sounds really cool. And I sort of get the premise of the concept of the business is that people actually want connectivity with the title or, or having a you know a share of a unit trust is very different to the share of an individual property and I, and I and I sort of appreciate where people and how that would come about it does sound really complicated though so so you're talking about platform so are you guys a I guess a prop tech a property technology business or are you an investment business or how do you explain yourself yeah that's a good question I mean definitely it's property technology you know prop tech is where we live because it's effectively it's a platform for fragmenting property right so it's creating this independent part ownership and it's a platform that actually enables that so we're not doing anything around the investment we're not managing anybody's money you know we're not suggesting it to anybody what type of investments they would make we're purely the platform so for example you could come to me with a property and the people that you want to fragment it with and then you just using the platform to then facilitate that so the end result is that everybody owns a bricklet which is their independent part ownership of that property and all the mechanisms that go with that and then the advantage is that you know any point later on that you want to sell it the mechanism's there for you to be able to sell it easily okay so you're essentially providing the architecture the infrastructure and I guess the utility for individual ownership of parts of a, a whole property. So can I go, if I go, oh, look, uh, Phil Tarrant, I want to sort of invest in properties in these different areas and, um, you know, as a diversification player, whatever it is, if I don't have a group of people to currently do this with, can I actually find people to do it with through Bricklet? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, you don't have to actually bring the people with you. So, in a pure kind of co-ownership model. So, because they're all independent, anybody, you know, let's say a property developer could bring a property to the bricklet platform, fragment it, and then look to sell those fragments, right? So, sell those bricklets. So, you know, we actually do have a number of people that already have got a diversified portfolio of bricklets, so which is basically part ownership of properties right across Australia. So, you know, that opportunity is absolutely there. Okay. It's really interesting. And, and for a lot of people, they might be, might be blowing their mind going, oh, what? I can actually buy like a slice or, or a bricklet of a property. How how fragmented can you make an individual property? And let's for really easy, simple visual stuff, like a four-bedroom house in the suburbs in Sydney, for example. How much can you chunk it up in order to hold one bit of it, two bits of it, four bits of it, or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, the sweet spot number we're seeing is around twenty to thirty thousand dollars. Seems to be a sweet spot where you know there's a minimum. If you don't go too low, then the percentage of fees around stamp duty become a little bit higher later on when you want to trade that. So it needs to be at a certain level. But also, people like to see value when it comes to that ownership of the property, right? Though, so that twenty thousand dollars seems to be a good number. You can take it up to any piece. You could take a million dollar property and split it into four you know, four bricklets of $250,000 each. It's really up to the vendor, you know, to then make that decision. And obviously we can help them, you know, through the metrics of that, but, and then the platform just creates that. And so coming back to, you know, what we're providing is purely that platform play. And then you have other companies that that provide the strategy around the bricklets as well. So, for example, if you were saying to me, hey, look, I really love this idea. I want to buy some bricklets. I want to build a portfolio, but I don't really know that much about, you know, property or, you know, especially going outside of my area. You know, how can you help me? Well, we have partners. There's a company, for example, there's a real estate agent called Future Realty who do exactly that. So, they help people provide, you know, a way to build out their portfolios and build a strategy with them to take it to the next step. So, you know, and then any other real estate agents can also do the same. It's a really interesting platform, Darren, and I think we're fortunate in the property sector and we've, I guess put the hat on that we're in the property industry. Um, us from a media side of things, you from a prop tech side of thing, we're very fortunate as some really smart people thinking about opportunities and challenges in this market. And I think we'll see prop tech into the future being a big driver of that. Did you structurally like – Multiple people owning or being on a title of a property is not a new thing by any any means, but was there any sort of mechanical changes to legislation that you needed to sort of 
you know, run in parallel with the development of Bricklet or the mechanics for this type of thing? Or was it pretty much just, it's there, it happens right now, and you're just putting an overlay of property technology across it? Yeah, effectively, it's an overlay. So there was no regulatory change required to do what we do. So we're using all the mechanisms that are there now. We're putting over the top of that an efficient way to do it. So, you know, it just allows so much more efficiency. So I guess to buy property, you have to first you know, go to a real estate agent, find it, then you have to go and do your conveyancing and all these different pieces. Well, we've automated the whole piece so that you only need to log on, you find the bricklet, you basically purchase and transact. And so everything else happens automatically underneath. So in one of the, and we'll get into the sort of pros and cons of, you know, this type of investment structure, but one of the, it depends which side of the coin you're on, but one of the benefits for people about investing in property is that, it's not very liquid. So when you get a, something like COVID-19 happens and you see what happens with share markets, because a lot of it's sentiment driven, it, it drops by multiple tens of percents in a day. Typically, property doesn't have that because it's not very tradable and you don't get the immediacy of sentiment changes, price points overnight. Can you give me some sense for how tradable it is operating within in this particular sense with Bricklet? Is this something I can get in and out of over a number of days, number of weeks, number of months, number of years. You know, can you give me some sense to that? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's early days as far as the platform has been operational, mm. but we have done you know nine million dollars worth of bricklet sales, and you know we've got a number of really good properties and projects that are being fragmented at the moment. So, again, it's you know we're just the platform. So, like say for example, we, you know we have a you know you buy a bricklet in a property, and then you want to sell it. You know, you've got two choices. You can go onto the platform and you can find a buyer who's already an existing Bricklet user, or you might go find someone who wants to just buy your Bricklet and then they become a user of the Bricklet platform just to be able to do the transaction. So it's not about you know Bricklet creating this whole ecosystem. We've got the user base that can you know that can take on the sales of the Bricklets. We also have you know there's a number of funds that are that are starting to see this as really interesting as well. So you know we're looking to drive that liquidity you know as much as we can. But it, again, it's all up to the market. I and mean, obviously, we'll work with a lot of the real estate agents to make sure that we can drive that liquidity as best we can. Okay, really interesting stuff. We're going to go a quick break, Darren. When we come back, um, I want to dig down to the type of people who are using Bricklet right now. We're back in a moment. Love property? The current Buyer's Agent of the Year and Director of Pure Property Investment, Paul Glossop, does too. And right now, he's offering you the chance to secure his best-selling book, A Surfer's Guide to Property Investing, absolutely free. Simply jump on Pure Property Investment's Facebook page, hit the message button and type Smart Property to claim your free book today. Welcome back, everyone. Phil Tarrant here, host of the Smart Property Investment Show with Darren Younger. He's CEO of Bricklet, which is a, a platform that allows you to buy fragments of property or bricklets. We're having a really good discussion around the emergence of prop tech businesses like this and changing the way in which people can look at investing or, I guess, shift in, into a different gear when it comes to investing in uh, residential real estate. Darren, you know, I think it's important for us to separate for our listeners the difference between advice around how, where, and what to do as a property investor versus the mechanics of doing that effectively. What we're talking about here with Bricklet is the, the mechanics to effectively transact in property in a different way that you might do right now. You still need to go out and make the decision-making around where and how and who to invest with and maybe what partners you use as a result of it. But can you give me a bit of an idea of the type of investors who have been attracted to Bricklet so far? What, what do they look like? What do they smell like? Where are they in their investment journey? Yeah, sure. I guess, you know, there's a number of segment, popular segments that we're seeing. I mean, one is definitely the, you know, the property investor who, you know, loves property and can't borrow to buy the next piece of property. And so, you know, they're looking at Bricklet as a way to extend that or a way to um, diversify their current portfolio as well. Another big market that we're seeing is self-managed super funds because they see the value of, you know, if they've got $200,000 to spend and they want to put that into direct property assets, they can't really really buy much for $200,000, especially without a loan. So, you know, by having a portfolio of bricklets across that $200,000 is actually quite interesting for them. So, we've seen a number of uh, SMSFs come on and, and buy bricklets in that context. And then also, you know, I think the millennials or the people that are, you know, trying to get into the property market, this really helps them as well, especially now that we've partnered with a finance company to you know to provide loans for bricklets so the other big advantage of fragmented property where the fragments are on title 
is that you know we can also use that as security for finance and so we've got a finance company that provides loans as well so if you think about someone who's got five or ten thousand dollars saved up they can then get a loan to buy you know thirty forty thousand dollar bricklet and they're well and truly in the property game yeah I was, important point i was going to ask about around uh, leverage and for many property investors you know leverage is a great enable for them to create wealth through you know being exposed to property and then being able to realise the capital growth of that, hopefully with a good yield. So lenders are happy with this type of structure as a property investor because it's been happening before anyway. You've just put the overlay of technology across it, but do they have any concerns or reservations about too many people being on title or you know, what's the financial capacity of other people who are on the same title and know the risk around that? must be a completely new discipline in banking to be able to lend in this regards. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when I say we have a a financial institution, we do have one that we've partnered with. Many of them don't actually understand it or or get it because Mm. it's not a mortgage on title. So, basically, with this independent part ownership, the way that we've structured it is that effectively everyone can so it might be that let's say there's 20 bricklet holders on a property that are all listed on title. There might be four of those that actually have finance against their own piece. So it creates a very interesting dynamic, but you know it's part of the secret sauce, I guess, around what we've created mm. and how we've created that partnership as well. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting stuff. And as you dig deep into it, you see all the different you know, ways you can look at it and some of the mechanics of it. And we've sort of spoken about sort of how it works, but you know, and the type of people who are taking advantage of it right now. But what would you say, you know, I touched on it, diversification. So you can, you know, your exposure to markets, you can multiply it by doing this. But why else would you consider this particular way of investing? And there's many different ways. I mean, we're starting to see a number of different scenarios. I mean, to start off with, anything that has a title can be fragmented, right? So it could be commercial property. It could be you know some friends that want to buy an Airbnb property. It could be any sort of investment property that can be fragmented. But I think the use cases that that I guess are a little bit more surprising, especially now that we have the the funding opportunities against bricklets and you know, the finance company partnering with us is that things like distressed mortgages. So, the ability to solve that situation by selling down some of your property, so effectively bricklatizing the house and, you know, keeping most of it, but selling some off and then refinancing it. It's a very interesting model. And I think, you know, in the next few months, you know, it could become quite popular. Yeah. And I hadn't really thought about that application of it, but, um, you know, again, it's how technology is providing innovation into how people invest in property. And I guess in a, a interconnected with that, but a similar point, if you're already, and I think some of my properties I own in conjunction with other people, are you able to sort of re-engineer and overlay it so you could actually put those type of assets into this system and use the platform for the betterment of better understanding, appreciation for how it all works? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, you know, I mean, the platform can be used, you know, like I say, you know, it's in, in many different ways and for many different circumstances. So, you know, I mean, that we're only at the beginning of kind of what, you know, what we're starting to see around, mm. you know, how it can be leveraged. I mean, you know, we've also got some people that are buying bricklets for their kids and for their grandkids, you know, instead of, you know, instead of kind of leaving them the house, so to speak, they're buying them bricklets to get started and things like that. So, you know, there's some really interesting use cases. Mm. And that'll evolve over time as property markets evolve and the way in which it works evolves. The term bricklet, did you have you created the this piece of fragmented property being called a bricklet you've called it that or you've yeah, taken absolutely. it from somewhere else? Yeah, so bricklet is the name. So that's the name that we've trademarked and we've called it a bricklet. So effectively, yeah. So, you know, you've got a property, instead of it being a property, it's now 20 bricklets or 30 bricklets or, you know, where it starts to also get very interesting is that we have some projects that the bricklets actually across multiple properties. So if you've got, for example, seven townhouses, we've got one project that has seven townhouses and across those seven townhouses, it's split up into 280 bricklets. So every bricklet owner is actually getting rent across seven properties. So you're actually adding another layer of diversification across those assets. And I guess one of the benefits of investing in this way is that, yes, you get that diversification play, you can get into property, direct property at a lower rate, all this sort of stuff. If you actually want to trade out and sell your bricklets, how do you determine value of that asset at that given time? 
Yeah, I guess the easiest way to explain it is we will always have the independent valuations as a guide, you know, in the same way that, you know, you have a, a company on the ASX who has a share price and then you'll have research companies that say that's undervalued or overvalued based on what they think, you know, that just kind of sets the guide. And then it's really up to the market to determine that because it's no different to how real estate agents work, right? If you want to sell your, your property on the market for a million dollars, I think it's worth 900000 then there's a real estate agent that sits in between us and you know, we kind of, you know, I'll put in another bid, then you, you know, offer bid, offer bid. And then once we agree on a price, then hopefully we transact and we sell the property. So, Bricklet is the same. So, we offer a, a marketplace where, you know, people can put offers in and, and people can bid prices. And then, you know, once there's an agreement, they can uh, transact. So, the market sets the price. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then in the same way as like in the ASX, you know, when a share price changes, you know, the market cap of that uh, company is effectively the share price times the number of shares. Mm. So, it will work the same in Bricklet world. Okay. That's interesting. That means people are perpetually, if, if people are transacting on individual properties, that reaffirms a capital value base whenever there's a transaction, you know, so people can actually map and monitor the performance of their investment any given time. What's the secondary market like at the moment? So, you're it sounds like you've done a lot of formulation of new, what do you call a package of bricklets, like a yeah, single asset? I guess just, I mean, well, a portfolio, you know, you can actually take a portfolio approach as well and have, you know, multiple bricklets across different properties. But again, that's just like, a, I guess, a basket of goods, right? It's got yeah. to um, <laughs> have a basket of bricklets. A, a um, basket of bricklets. <laughs> and, and how's the secondary market been on it by people transacting bricklets to other buyers yeah, of bricklets? So, is it to people who already have bricklets or is it to people who are new to brickleting, if that's a word, <laughs> and um, and they're transacting that way. Yeah, so with the platform being so new and property as an asset class is not very tradable, as in, you know, if I buy a piece of property now, whether it's a full property or a bricklet, you know, I'm probably not going to sell it within the next few months because, you know, because I'm paying purchase fees because I'm actually paying the stamp duty, you know, I'd be crazy to sell it you know, unless it was worth more than the total amount, which includes the fees. So, we haven't, the mechanisms are in place, but we don't have any secondary trading yet because it's also new. You know, I mean, most bricklets will be held for kind of 12 months minimum, I think, you know, to realize va- enough value to make sure that, you know, you've covered off at least just stamp duty. Yeah. And this goes back to what I mentioned around the liquidity of property, just the the basic realities of the entry costs into property. And we're talking about stamp duty and stuff, which may go away, who knows, you know, it means that you still retain that, the positive nature of it not being too liquid to shape and change price or variations in prices. Darren, we're going to go to a quick break again. We'll be back in a moment. Worried about making the wrong choice with your next investment? You're not alone. If you truly want to become the master of your own lifestyle design through real estate, then you need to speak with Dashdot Buyers Agents, who will help you acquire cash flow positive properties in high growth areas with value add potential, so you can create more freedom in your life. Visit dashdot.com.au forward slash SPI. Welcome back, everyone. Phil Taron here, host of the Smart Problem Investment Show with Darren Young, is CEO of Bricklet. We're talking Bricklet, Bricketing. I don't know if I've, I've taken, I don't know if you can turn into an adjective. Yeah. Or can you be a brickletter? Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm sure you've had a lot of fun around that over a couple of beers. But um, hey, can you give me a bit of a? Do you got any case studies of how this has worked, or or, or yeah, absolutely. Or anyone who's done this, because you know I'm a very visual sort of example orientated sort of person, so I might benefit from that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I can give you a couple of different examples. I mean. Just say you had a million dollar property, and you know it might be bricketized into. Um, bricketized is another one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say it was uh, bricketized into forty bricklets. They'd be twenty five thousand dollars each, right? So effectively, you know, everybody owns that share of the property. They're all listed on the land title, and then at some point in the future, when you know someone wants to, you know, they've sold their bricklet. Let's say you've bought your bricklet for twenty five thousand. And now you've sold it for, let's say, twenty-seven thousand. So you've made a gain on that bricklet. You know that twenty-seven thousand then sets the, I guess, you know, the total price for that property because you just mm-hmm. multiply it back out again and get the new number. But it's also used for, you know, for development style projects as well, value adds projects. So the way I describe that is, it's more the bricklets you're buying. Bricklets coming in earlier stage in a development project. So why wait for the project to be completed or have a completed? you know, complete a building if you were prepared to come in earlier and receive some of that upside with the developer. We're finding that property developers are really interested in this and we've got some great case studies around that as well. So that's essentially sort of getting involved in the off-the-plan space, so getting early with a bricklet on a, a new development and here's a good another diversification play, right? It means you can 
with a lot of off plan stuff, if you time the market right, you can do really well out of it. So it gives you some exposure to those type of opportunities, does it? Yeah, it's kind of like that, but it works in a different way with Bricklet. So, and this is why the developers are really interested in it is that, so the Bricklet, because you're actually on title, basically you're buying into those properties, but you're buying into it in a future state. So mm. we raise all the money for the property, for the land and for the, and for the construction of that. So you're buying your Bricklet you have your name on title and it's worth X dollars because if that's going to happen and then when it actually does, you know, when it does happen, the value is added and so, you you know, you'll gain an increase over time. So, how long have you been at this for now, Darren? How, how old is the platform? Platform launched late last year. So, okay. let's call it six months. We've been in play. We, we'll be close to $10 million of sales now, which includes the COVID period. So, we had a little, yeah. bit, of a, little bit of a slowdown for a couple of months, put on pause. Yeah. And sort of what was the, how long has it got? you to a point in terms of software development, we're getting a bit techie or or prop techie right now, but how long was the incubation period to actually get the platform built so you could start putting, start sort of transacting on it? Yeah, I think in total it would have been about 18 months from kind of when we started to to when we actually launched it. Mm. Um, We did a proof of concept under financial services model to wholesale investors just to make sure that, you know, we didn't do anything wrong, (laughs) let's say. And then we, you know, we learned a lot through that. And so, you know, we've now come out of that and we've learned the model around how we actually go to market now with, you know, with this platform. So we're really excited about it. And when do you normally find like chatting with, potential in investors if you're an investor in bricklet you're just i guess an investor you haven't termed a, a phrase for it yet but when do you sort of get some pushback or is it normally people don't understand what you're doing or they don't get it what are the sort of key questions you normally get when people go oh tell me more yeah it's more the understanding of it how does it work because it's so new and, and it you know, it's done in a different way because they're on title. It's like, yeah, do I pay stamp duty? Yes, you do, but you pay it in your pro rata amount. You know, they're the kind of main questions around, you know, what's the actual or can I sell it later? How does that work? You know, they're the main kind of, I guess, questions that come up. Can I buy it in my SMSF is another popular one. And obviously the answer to that is yes, because it's direct property. Um, you know, so all the bricklet purchases, you know, they often, you know, asking very similar questions, but similar in, you know, what they're actually after. And when it comes to um, investing or co-investing, I guess you want to call it, where you might be multiple people on one title and sometimes it might be a brother and sister or, you know, a mum and dad helping, you know, a child into the property market. So this stuff happens and has been happening for, for years and years and years. And often they say when you're doing that, make sure you've you got the right architecture, infrastructure and documentation to make that as stress-free and easy to extract or maneuver as possible. So the actual platform itself, does it help you with the sort of the rules around how you can trade in and out of the property? You know, because normally you say, I'll go get a legal agreement done to make sure you, if you end up in a fight, you know where you stand. How does Bricklet help out with that? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, well, the whole premise of Bricklet platform is creating that independent part ownership, right? So we're getting a lot of real estate agents now bringing us properties and groups of people that are buying them to use Bricklet as that mechanism because it just takes all that pain away, right? So it actually does, it's the, been the missing piece for a long time. And I know a number of people who, you know, were going to buy with their brother, sister, uncle, auntie, and actually didn't do it because it just kind of got too hard. Like, how do we sell it later? And, you know, or if someone wants out, you know, all these kind of things, and it still happens all the time. So, you know, if there's anybody that's looking to buy property with other people, you know, if you do it on the Bricklet platform, then everybody actually owns their piece. So those conversations don't happen. Like Mm -hmm. if I own it with, you know, if I own a Bricklet of a property and there's 20 others on there, I'm independent of them and I can sell mine at any time. So I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and I guess I'll see that and be all friends and sit around and stuff. You can be quite detached, can't Correct. you? And uh, you know, and disconnected with it all. And you don't yeah, need absolutely. to be. Uh, you don't have to have meetings together to work out. Well, how do you go with like? Um, is there any type of property that's best brickleted, if that's a word? Because um, <laughs> what I'm thinking, you know, when you look at repairs and maintenance and all this sort of stuff, right? Or you know, we need to, you know, the hot water system's blown up. We need to pay for it. Or hey, uh, look, this wall's falling down. Let's get it fixed. How do you go about managing those type of things? Is it like a mini strata or something or other, is it? Yeah, interesting. So I guess you know, the benefit of the Bricklet platform is that you have total control and total option over what you want to do, right? So in the same way that you know, you could actually own, you could be the landlord of a property and you could give all the rights to the property manager. Say, look, you know, here's my investment property. I just want to get the net rent and you just look after it for me and and mm-hmm. away you go and I don't, don't speak to me. In the same way, you know, you've got the option to do that with the property managers that manage the properties under 
under Bricklet. At the same time, you've also got the opportunity to, you know, have a say yourself, you know, and again, through the platform, there'll be, there's ways that you can communicate through the platform to landlord, to property manager, to other users even. Yeah, actually, I imagine real estate agent property managers probably quite like it as well, right? Like uh, in markets where there's heaps of supply mm-hmm. around them, um, it's a way in which they can, you know, find other ways to make their properties more attractive to more buyers because I guess the buying price isn't as much, but for property managers as well, these things they manage. So none of that really changes, does it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they still need to be managed. And again, right, Bricklet's not a property manager. So, you know, we leverage the skills of external people or in fact, the Bricklet owners leverage those skills, not Bricklet Mm. themselves. So, it's just an external service to us. Yeah, it's a really good idea. I I sort of get it. And um, to try and do this 10 years ago would have been impossible without technology, right? Like it just would have have been just a a minefield of paperwork, which... um, which no one wants to touch. So uh, that's cool. So what's, you know, this is a bit less sort of property investor related, but it's more about, I guess, this emergence of prop tech and how property investors can use it. What's the future looking like for you guys? Is the base platform pretty good now and yet you're happy to proceed as it is, or there's always more features and tweaks and and sort of ironing out gremlins to go? What, what's yeah, going to happen? Sure. I mean, the platform's in a good space at the moment, but, you know, there's always improvements, there's always things to do, right? So, um, that will always continue, but we're ready, we're absolutely ready to scale now. And I think, you know, coming out of the pandemic period and, and people are starting to to get really active now as well, which is great to see. So, the next step is really scaling up and leveraging, you know, all the different partnerships. And we're starting to see a number of, you know, big sales agent groups, buyers agents that are really starting to leverage the platform. Where the buyers agents love it is that, you know, they find a, a property that they would love to sell to their clients instead of finding one client who can afford that one property they can now sell it in smaller pieces to their client base create more diversity across their client base um, mm. and, all they, and at the end they just bring it to bricklet and we fragmentize it for them and away they go interesting Are you got any buyers agents specializing just in this type of investment structure yet or is it a bit too soon Oh, we've got a couple that are finding it very interesting and I've already got a couple of projects underway. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah, cool. which is interesting. Well, nice. Well, you know, I really enjoyed chatting, Darren. I'm a lot more informed and educated around Bricklet and I've, I've sort of been aware of your business for a little while and um, I'm so familiar with the fragmenting of property. But uh, I think you've, for people who that appeals to, you've made it a lot more accessible and, and probably may change the way in which some people think about investing in property if, you know, I know a lot of people who are tapped out from lending right now purely because of the industries they work in or some of the, because they're SME business owners and banks are a little bit sort of cautious of lending to people who've been impacted by COVID. So it might allow them to keep them in the game and connected with property. And you know, for many of them, it's like a drug, right? If they're not buying, they get a bit, a bit edgy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's nice. How do people find more about you guys, Darren? Yeah, I guess the easiest is come to our website, bricklet.com.au, and then you'll get some information there for that form if you want to get some more information. Very cool. Nice one. Well, mate, really, uh, look, I hope this goes well for you. It's good to see uh, innovation in property, and and I think we should expect a lot more of this coming out of the prop tech community uh, of which Australia, where we've got a very uh, mature property market here. And and for those listeners that probably aren't aware, um, you know, we punch well above our weight globally in terms of the innovation you see within property. I think a lot of it's because Aussies love property so much, Darren. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice Reach one, mate. Thanks for your time. Of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really, thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Phil. I hope you enjoyed that, everyone. Remember to, um, I guess this is sort of, uh, you know, we like to cover a lot of ground on the Smart Property Investment Show from investor stories to, you know, some of the tech that's available for property investors to think about how they do stuff differently. So let us know what you reckon. Um, you can email the team, editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. If you're not checking out uh, Smart Property Investment, just go to the website, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, or you can subscribe there as well. Social media is Smart Property HQ for headquarters. If you want to keep abreast of what's going on in property, and please, quick favor, and Darren will do it as well because I know how much he loves his podcast. Please keep those reviews coming on uh, wherever, whatever platform you're listening to this podcast. The guys and girls here get a real kick out of it. And we do read them and uh, we're going to start reading out some of the reviews moving forward as well and and uh, looking at some of that feedback. So please do that. It'd be um, a real favor to me and uh, I do appreciate it. We'll be back again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property, or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. 
Propertyology regards right now as a very exciting time for investing in Australian real estate. There are some fantastic opportunities that Propertyology can help you take advantage of before buyers re-emerge from their coronavirus cocoons. Propertyology has a national focus. Now more than ever, experience and knowledge are the most valuable currency. Propertyology has that in spades. To find out how Propertyology's multi-award winning buyers agents can help you prosper, contact them now at propertyology.com.au.